What's up guys, it's Mac, I'm back. And today we're out here on Lake Alpha Papasco and today we're filming a walleye episode. Today we're gonna focus on targeting walleye on main lake structure, kind of where to approach and how to present baits to fish and go over a couple different tactics. But walleye fishing is not something I do a lot, but I think I definitely, I think I've definitely learned a lot just from fishing this lake and learned kind of what fish like on this lake. And I'm more than happy to share that information with you guys. So stay tuned and I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so as I mentioned, we're gonna target walleyes on main lake structure. And when I say main lake structure, I'm talking like humps out in the middle, like isolated to deep water surroundings. So you can see here on the mapping here, I got some deeper humps here that we're gonna focus on. This time of year, it seems to me like the walleyes are a little bit shallower. Um, a little bit shallower than they are in the fall at least. So right now it's been seeming like they've been kind of in that 25 to 20 foot of water kind of deal. And on the structures, they kind of roam all over. So you kind of got to search for them a little bit at times, but that's where your kind of screens come into play, right? Like your mapping, your live scope, if you have live scope, if not 2D and down is definitely a excellent tool too. I've used that for many years and had much success with it too. The live scope just helps a little bit, but with a 2D technology, I mean, that's all you really need. You really need to just know your depth and marking fish, right? Like you can see here on the down, there's a small fish here. Didn't mark it that great in the 2D, but definitely see it on the down right there. And there's another one there. So even without the live scope, even in the water, I already know that there's fish here. And right now, this time of year, you just need to find the depth that those fish are sitting in and you're gonna find them on almost any structure. It's just a matter of finding where they're housing. And what I like to do when scouring the humps for fish is I like to focus on the wind. The wind's the biggest factor when targeting walleyes. You'll always hear guys say walleye chop, walleye chop, walleye chop. And that is, that's crucial. Uh, a good wind is definitely really beneficial for walleye fishing. And what that does on the humps especially is when you have a wind crashing in, hammering one of these uh, sides of a hump like this, that's where the fish will, li will likely always stage. The fish love to stage into the wind. In my experience, if you have wind hammering from the north northwest side, you'll find those fish up favoring the northwest side. South southeast side, you'll have them favoring the southeast side. It's just a matter of finding the wind and learning what those fish are doing in the wind. Up here, the wind pushes a lot of bait fish around in the humps, so that kind of dictates where the walleyes are going to be, what they're going to be doing. You can usually always find fish on the humps no matter what, but the wind definitely is a big factor in where on the humps they'll be. So for bigger structures, the wind is definitely crucial. If it's not windy on huge humps, I won't even fish them just because it takes too long to scour around and find the fish. But on smaller humps in dead calm, you can always find them because they're small pieces of structure. You don't have to search that much. It's just a small area. They're gonna be there. It's just a matter of finding them. Another thing you'll notice too, as I kind of go around and check out each piece of structure is, I have my uh, my highlights on for certain depths. And right now, as I mentioned, those fish are kind of sitting in that, a little bit shallower than they would be in the fall. They're sitting in that 18 to kind of 25 foot of water kind of deal. So right now I got that depth highlighted. And I might be out of it a little bit at certain times, but that's what I'm gonna be focusing on. I'm gonna be focusing on the depths that I've been finding the fish in and that eliminates your search time. It, it, it saves you from searching around through all the depths from 30 all the way up to 15. You can just focus on the depths you wanna be on. So right now, like I said, I'm focusing on that kind of 20 foot, like the 18 to 22 is where I'm focusing right now. And ideally that's where they'll still be sitting. So with there being no wind right now, it can be a little bit tough finding the walleyes and I'm, I'm struggling a little bit to find the walleyes up on the up on the bigger structures. So, as I mentioned earlier, um, sometimes the smaller structures are easier to fish. So that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to focus on the smaller pieces of structure and try to isolate those fish on the small structure.
there's some fish sitting on top. That's a good example of what I was talking about. The smaller structure just seems to always have fish on it, and usually they're a lot easier to find. So I'm gonna spot lock right on top of these guys. Very top. These ones are pretty shallow actually, up in 16, 15 feet of water even. So let's try going with the crash and bang right off the bat. Change it up, put on another Tika, but I put on a blue chrome. Um, sometimes with high sun, silvers and blues can be a little bit better, a little bit more natural colors. Oh, that was a rock, I think. I don't think that was a fish. That's a fish, though. Pinned it to the bottom. Whether it bit it or I snagged it, I don't know yet. Oh, snagged him in the belly. Sorry, bud. That commonly happens with uh, the snap and, like, baits are your snap at that aggressively, too, is... If the walleyes aren't super aggressive, you will actually hook quite a few in the belly or inside of the face, whatever. Usually they are actually showing it some sort of aggression. They're just coming to check it out. But sometimes you catch them in the belly. Since we didn't hook it properly, I'm not gonna show you off. On the board though, sort of. There's another one. This one's small. It's in the mouth though. Holy moly, nothing special, but it was a walleye. So maybe the color was the difference, blue chrome? Who knows? Keep out of it, though. On fish, can't complain. It's a rock. sucks and another one bites the dust okay so while we wait on that we'll wait on me to re-rig a new jig new jig and wrap I'm gonna just soak a jig in a minnow here I'm gonna close up ahead a bit you can see there's a couple nice marks up here so what I do is I keep my pole facing forward and then I use my jog feature on the Minkota there to just move ahead a bit so I can see that that's 30 feet ahead so I'll jog us ahead 32 feet and I'll guess right on top of these fish and you can see there we're right on top of these fish now so, let's drop that down now, present that right in front of the fish, and see what happens. Here we are, right smack dab in front of that fish's face. Holy man, I just got smoked, it wasn't even focused. One thing I will mention about like using the live scope is it's good because it shows you the fish, but man, it can it can kind of mess you up because it makes you want to stay there way longer than you should because you see fish even if they aren't biting. Sometimes fish just will not bite. They will not bite no matter what you do. And I think that that's where the live scope kind of met, like messes a lot of anglers up is because you see those fish, so you know there's fish there, so then you want it, like you get attached. You want to stay there, you want to grind, you want to try to get those fish to bite even though you might just be better off going somewhere else. Right on top of them now. There's one. This might be a pike. If I was to guess, it's a pike or a big walleye. That one just shot in, I didn't even really mark it. So that kind of tells me it's probably a pike. Lo and behold, Okay, Mike, it's minus two. 
down. Drop it right down to the bottom. Super finesse right now with these fish. Not very aggressive at all. Oh! Come on, kid. You get one bite after all that and you still mess it up. Embarrassment. On camera to boot. <laughs> right back down there present it the exact same way dead still not even gonna move it there we go hook them that time feels like it could be a better walleye for sure That's a good one. Net worthy one for sure. Holy smokes. That took a lot of coaxing to get that fish to bite. So that's a good walleye for sure. That's a long one. So you saw it there, I missed that fish and then I just literally had to dead stick it forever for that fish to eat. Came in and looked at it like three times before it actually ate. All right, there you go, pretty nice fish. It's got a quick measurement on it, pooping everywhere. We got ourselves a 29 incher, 29 inch walleye. One last little quick look out of there. Gorgeous fish. Wish this camera was a little bit better. Maybe that's better there. Sweet, 29 inch walleye, wicked. Had to finesse that one. Let's get a good release on her. Oh god, she's got a lot of energy. Alright, so as you saw there, we got that walleye to finally eat. I think that that was the same fish I missed at the start, but I missed him, then dropped back down and it bit again. It took a while to finesse though. It had to, it just wanted it just dead still, zero movement. So that's what I did. I just let it sit dead still, no movement, and it finally came in an eight. And luckily enough, it was a big fish too, so that makes it all that more enjoyable, right? Catching a big fish like that. Yeah, it's more fun to catch them on active bait, but we got that one on a jig in a minnow. Got it in the boat, nonetheless. But like I said, on the smaller structure, it's easier to find the fish sometimes. So that was a good example. We looked around the flats, couldn't find them stack up at all. Just like one here, one there kind of deal. Yeah, you could probably pull cranks or something for them, but today we're focusing on that vertical jigging on this on the main lake structure. So we positioned around this hump, searched around a little bit, and then we found some fish. So we sat on them. It took a while, but we got them to eat. We got that one to eat specifically, and that's just that's the beauty of it. You know, you gotta just put in a little bit of work, do a bit of detailing, but a bit of surveying, and then get those fish to eat. 